Yo, what's going on? This is Isaiah from Quarantine Chats coming at you live. This is episode 36 of Quarantine Chats. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm Isaiah, and hopefully you guys are all doing well during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic that we are going through. Hopefully you guys are all enjoying quarantine right now. I'm outside right now getting a little bit of sunlight for myself. I've been trapped in my house all day and, you know, it's just been miserable. So I decided, you know what, why waste a nice, awesome day like today? Like, look at this, man. Look at this. Look at this beautiful sunlight, the beautiful blue sky, the amazing plants that are growing. It's just beautiful, man. Just so, so beautiful. Um... I hope you guys, you know, I know that we are all in this quarantine right now, but I hope you guys make some time each day. Just go outside, get some exercise, get some fresh air, get some sunlight. It would be really, really good for your body. All right, let's get into it. So there was reports coming out of Seattle today that the Seattle Seahawks, who are Interested in signing Devontae Freeman, they have had discussions. They even offered him a reported one-year, four million dollar contract. And ladies and gentlemen, my thoughts on the Seahawks potentially signing Devontae Freeman is I think the Seattle Seahawks should absolutely sign Devontae Freeman. Steven, by the way, if you're watching, I want you to get into my video right now and just debate with me like the old days. But Back to Devontae Freeman, the Seattle Seahawks, if this is true, they should absolutely go for it. One year, $4 million for a top five running back in the NFL when healthy. Devontae Freeman, let's not forget, when he's healthy, he's a beast, dude. This guy wrecked havoc on all NFL defenses. He was so, so good. Um, he's just not been healthy the last couple of years. That's why his production has gone downhill. Plus, you know, you take into consideration the fact that um, Kyle Shanahan, the offensive coordinator, he's gone. They've had Dirk Cutter and Steve Sarkeesian. No, none of those two compare to Shanahan. Um, you've got Matt Ryan. He's been kind of inconsistent. So I, I wouldn't put all the blame between... Devontae Freeman's like dip in production to just him like being out of his prime. I would say it's because of him not being healthy. Uh, you know, offensive line hasn't been great. Coaching has been awful. So I would put those reasons as the reasons why of Devontae Freeman's decline. And if Seattle gets it, man, that's going to be amazing for them. Devontae Freeman would bring energy. He's going to bring swagger. He's going to bring juice to a Seahawks offense, which desperately needs that type of juice. Uh, they, Yeah, that type of juice that Devontae Freeman will bring them. You know, you've got Russell Wilson, but what, do you, what else do you have? You got DK Metcalf. Eh, he's all right. Tyler Lockett. He's not like he's he's not like the best receiver. You need another offensive weapon in that offense behind Russell Wilson. Adding a healthy Devontae Freeman, that would make the Seahawks a much improved offensive team. And also the Devontae Freeman deal, one year four million, you know, it's a no risk, high reward move. I explained why it's a high reward move earlier. The reason why if he struggles, if he's not healthy or he shows up to camp out of shape and he's not himself, you can just cut Devontae Freeman and you won't have to eat that much money. Like four million, you know, the normal person would say, yeah, you know, that's a lot, a lot of money. But come on, man. We all know that four million to an NFL team is like a dollar to a normal person. So... I think the Seahawks should definitely go for it. If they if they sign Devontae Freeman and he is the healthy Devontae Freeman, he would bring a lot of juice and a lot of swagger and a lot of energy to their offense, which they desperately need. All right. Now let's get into our second topic, which is it was a very interesting topic that I saw today out of an NBA group that I'm in and it was if 
you were an NBA GM and you had to choose between Devin Booker or Jason Tatum, which one of those two would you build your team around? And for me, I thought about this long and hard. And I got to tell y'all, I would take Devin Booker to build my team around and build my team around him over Jason Tatum. The reason why is because Devin Booker, if you look at their both offensive packages, Devin Booker's package is more complete than Jason Tatum. Devin Booker is a deadly three-point shooter, which is extremely valued in this NBA. He can handle the basketball. He can run an offense. He's a great passer. The guy can get to his spots. He can get his own shot. He doesn't have to have someone set him up for a shot. He can get his own shot. He's a great mid-range shooter. Jason Tatum, I like Jason Tatum. He's a great defender, which also is valued highly in today's NBA. But Jason Tatum needs help. uh, Needs someone to help him set up his shot. He's not that good of a three-point shooter. Um, His mid-range, though, the mid-range game is very good. It's not valued that highly in today's NBA. What is valued highly in today's NBA is three-point shooting. Devin Booker over Jason Tatum all day, every day in that regard, three-point shooting. So that's why I would build my team around Devin Booker over Jason Tatum. Uh, no disrespect to Tatum. He's he's a great player. He's coming into his own. Uh, I am just excited to see how his career... I think he's going to be a superstar in the future. I think both guys are going to be a superstar in the future. But I just think Booker's offensive package outweighs all the qualities that Tatum has. And that's why I would choose to build my team around Devin Booker. All right, we got a question from Alvin. Alvin wants to know, Isaiah, you've heard about Dak Prescott wanting $45 million per season. Would you pay Dak Prescott that type of money if you're the Dallas Cowboys? Ladies and gentlemen, you guys know me, man. I've been advocating for this. I think the Dallas Cowboys should cut bait with Dak Prescott. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. I think the Dallas Cowboys should cut bait with Dak Prescott, and they should trade a third-round pick to the San Francisco 49ers for Nick Mullins. I know you guys might be like, oh my gosh, Isaiah, um, you're on the weed or whatever drug. You, Why are you saying that... The Cowboys would get better with Nick Mullins than Dak Prescott. First of all, let me explain. I'm not saying Nick Mullins is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. I am saying Dak Prescott, he ain't worth $40 million, let alone $45 million. Are you kidding me? The guy's not even worth, I wouldn't even pay him $35 million. He's more of a $30 million to $33 million range. That's that's Dak Prescott. If he doesn't like what I'm going to give him, then that's too bad. I would cut him and or I would just trade him after. I wouldn't cut him because, you know, a franchise quarterback would net you a lot in assets. I would trade him. I would go get Nick Mullins. And then with all that money that I saved up, instead of paying Dak Prescott $45 million a year, which is ridiculous because he's nowhere near Mahomes level or even... Uh, Aaron Rodgers level, or hell, he's not even near Brad Kaya level, I would take that $45 million that I saved from not paying uh, Dak Prescott, and instead I chose to pay Nick Mullins $2 million, that $43 million I saved, and I would just use it to spread it around and get Nick Mullins the best wide receivers, the best running backs, the best offensive line to protect him because look at what the Niners did this season. Jimmy Garoppolo, he is a top 20 quarterback in the NFL, but the reason why they went to the Super Bowl is because of the defense. It's because he had great running backs. He had great wide receivers. He had great offensive line. He had a great supporting cast. If you have a great supporting cast around a 
quarterback, that quarterback will look good all the time. Just look at what Kirk Cousins is doing in Minnesota. Kirk Cousins is nowhere near a top 10 quarterback. But the reason why he always gets paid like one is because if you think about it, he has great weapons, wide receivers. He's got digs, deal, an offensive line, one of the best offensive lines in football, running backs, Dalvin Cook, one of the best running backs in football. They make him look good. The quarterback doesn't look good. It doesn't make the weapons look good. The weapons make the quarterbacks look good. So that's why I would cut bait with Dak Prescott. I would trade him, get great assets for him, get first-round picks, second-round picks, whatever, and then save a ton of money and pay the supporting cast around Nick Mullen. So that's what I would do if I'm Jerry Jones. Anyways, guys, it's been great talking to y'all. Um... Uh, let me stay on here for a couple of more minutes. I'm going to take a couple of questions. If you guys have some questions, uh, just comment it down below. Um, whew. Make sure you guys watch. Make sure you guys watch our episode on Friday, episode 30. 14 chats, me, Steven, Ryan, and others. We will be going at it. We will be talking about the controversial UFC fight. We will also be talking about um, Nick Wright's pathetic, laughable AFC predictions for 2020. And we will get into a lot more. We might even get into the Booker. Uh, uh, Dallas should pay Dak $45 million, like I just discussed right now. We'll discuss a lot more. Can't wait. Um, anyways, guys, it's been great talking to y'all. I hope you guys all have a tremendous night. And I hope you guys all stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys on Friday.